There's always quite a few people that watch this class later on in the day because mornings aren't so good or they have to work. So welcome to everyone, whether you're watching this at home without it being live or whether you are here with me right now. Um, I'll just remind you, Ross is having a rather significant COVID relapse and, um, and I am covering his bit for him, but it's okay because I know what I'm doing. So what you will need, my friends, is some kind of mat to work on and a couple of cushions or pillows are quite good so there's an exercise if you're new you'll be following me for everything there's an exercise where we do um, a kind of leg straightening thing that you'll need a pillow or a cushion underneath your legs for you guys know if you're level two or three it's because you've been coming for long enough to have graduated up to those levels and you can work with your light hand weights, starting with just really, really light hand weights, two tins of beans or something. And then obviously I know some people who are at level three who already progressed to proper hand weights, okay? So you will know if you're a level two or a three, uh, you will know the equipment that you need because you've been coming to class for long enough. If you are brand new, you're following me and we only do level one. So level one, we do, four things, four reps of each of the exercises as a maximum. It might be that you think, oh, I'll just do two because this is quite, you can feel it in your body already saying to you, enough. If you're level two, you're going to be doing six to eight. If you're level three, you do 10 reps. So that means that the people who stop earlier rest for longer. So it's a good system and it works. Just you have to kind of self-regulate, okay? So if you're level one, don't get ambitious. Don't think, oh, I feel quite energetic today. I'm just going to go with the level threes and do 10. You'll regret it. That's all I'm saying. We will start. So we have a fairly established set of exercises and we try to vary it so that you don't get too bored. But basically, we will build strength slowly. OK, so come down onto your mats. If you're level two or level three, you can put a resistance band now around the tops of your uh, well, it's just above the knee, it goes around the thigh, and it, you kind of press the knees out a little bit when you're lifting up. We're going to start with bridge pose. So I'm comfortable on the mat. I've got my back nice and long. So we'll take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, just gently lift the bottom up, peel it up, take a moment, and then slowly roll the back down. It's a bit like you're giving your back a bit of a massage. Okay, so level one is we're going to do that four times maximum. And again, you can stop before four. So gently rolling up and rolling down. And rolling up. And rolling down. So we've got one more to do as a level one. And everyone else, you can keep going and we will move into a rest after we've done this one. All right. So level one is just straighten down your legs and let the body rest totally. Make sure if you're use, usually practicing level two or level three and you've had a bit of a relapse, you really should be coming right back down to level one with us just for a couple of classes and let your body readjust again. Okay. So if you're lying down in rest now, I want you to just make sure the breath is slow. Good. If you're level three, I want you to stop by the next one. I think everyone has done so anyway. We're gonna bring those knees in and just give them a little bit of a hug. So just draw them into the chest. Okay. The next thing we're gonna be doing is called um, butterfly. So I've got the soles of my feet together and I'm letting the knees drop out wide, which is quite a strong stretch. So don't think, we're, don't worry if, we're, if we're, we're here too long, you can come out much earlier. I'm gonna put my hands on the floor either side of my hips. 
to give me a bit of stability. And all we do with butterfly is push into the sides of the feet and try and lift the bottom up, hold it for a second and lower back down. So it's quite hard, particularly if your hips are tight. So if you're level one and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I only want you to do two, okay? So lift and hold and gently lower down. I'm gonna demo four, so lift and hold and bring it down and lift and hold and bring it down. So that's maximum. If you're carrying on for a few more, then carry on. If you're in rest now, bring those knees out of this stretch and straighten the legs back down. That's it. Good. Okay. So everyone now in a resting position, take the resistance band off if you can. That's it. So the next one we're gonna do is the half bug. So I'll demonstrate level one and then I'll demonstrate the next level. So level one, we'll be having our legs bent and our arms back above the head. I'm gonna bring the hands in towards the knee, okay? Quite straightforward. If you're level two or level three, I want you to straighten the arms down. If you're level three, you can also have your very, very light hand weights in your hands and you'll be bringing the knee up from a straight leg position, okay? So level ones, you're with me, make sure your legs are bent and we're just gonna to touch that knee. And again, we'll do four. We're breathing out as we bring the knee in and in as we take the arms back. And what we're doing here is working to strengthen the arms a little bit, but mostly strengthening the muscles in the stomach and the thigh. So once you've done two each side, level one is, we're resting. I'm just gonna bring down the legs and again, sort of surrender down into the floor. That's it. Just allow a stillness. Good. That's it. Level three, you should be coming to an end now. I know this one, everyone's always quite keen to do lots of. <laughs> Strengthen the core back up. Do it gently. Taking a rest, allow a stillness. All right. So the next one, I'm gonna bend my legs four and it's going to be chest flies. So it's a little bit of work to strengthen up the arms and the muscles in the chest. If you're level two or three, you can work with really light hand weights for this. Level one is we're just going to be clenching our fists and we bring the arms up together above the chest. And I just touch my knuckles against each other there. I turn the hands away so they face away from me. I bend the arms and it's a bit like I'm doing a bench press in a gym with a kind of barbell and I push my arms up and then I take them wide again, take them out, bring them back, turn the palms and drop them down and push them up. So again, level ones, we're just gonna be doing four of these as a maximum. Remember, if it makes you feel a bit shaky already, you can stop, but you must be your own gauge for that. Down and up. I'm going to do one more. Level three, you're working with weights. But the slower you go with these, the more work it is. So just kind of gauge what you're doing and if it's the right amount for you. Okay, level one is we're going to put our arms down and again, straighten those legs down.
Good. Well done. It's great to see so many of you now at that level three stage. Yeah. Getting there. Well done. Okay, everyone be in rest position, please. <clears throat> it is important that you have a pause between each of the exercises and you don't just run from exercise to exercise. Just connecting with that breath, nice and slow. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do is the leg uh, lift or the leg squeeze. So I'm gonna put the bolster or the pillow underneath the back of my knee for level one is that's how we work it. And I can demonstrate the level two, level three. So level ones, we do this whole exercise lying down. Level two, level three, you can be up on your elbows. Okay, level one is we're basically gonna be squeezing one leg to straight to a flex and a point and lower it down. Okay, level two, you're gonna be lifting the leg, not super high, so it's not about going super high. In fact, the lower the leg, the more the thigh has to work. We do the flex and the point and we lower it, okay? So level one is you're with me, we're down. And I'm gonna squeeze one leg straight, flex point and lower it down. So that's one. I'm gonna do the other side, so alternate, squeeze, flex point and lower. First side again, squeeze, flex point, and lower. Squeeze, flex point, and lower. Now, we've done four in total, level one. If you want to do another one each side, because you're reclining, this is not such a demanding position, you can, but if you want to rest there, I would happily encourage you to do so. So I've just done one more each side. Level two, level three, keep going. Make sure there's no tension around the neck or the head. That's it. Good. Fantastic. Okay. Coming into a resting position now. Again, level one, we're just totally surrendering into the rest moment. Allowing the breath to move slowly in, slowly out. Okay, well done. We're gonna bring the knees in, roll onto our side, and then we're actually gonna come up onto our hands and knees. So come up slowly, you've been lying down for a while and obviously the blood pressure can kind of lower a little bit. I'm moving my cushion out the way and I'm onto my hands and knees. So we're gonna do a donkey kick, remember level twos, you can work donkey kick with the resistance band above the knee, okay? But remember, you're only a level two or a level three if you've been coming for at least three to four weeks. And the exercises at level one stage have not caused you any issues. Okay. So we're here, we're on our hands and knees, and the donkey kick for us level one is, is simply we push the heel up, tighten the bottom, and lower it down. If you're level two, level three, you can lift the heel up and then bring the knee in to add a little bit of work for the stomach muscles. Level ones, we're gonna alternate legs. So this is my second and lower. Strengthening those big muscles in the back of the legs and the bottom. These are the muscles that we want to strengthen so that we can go on walks without causing ourselves relapse. And again, once you've done your four, you can rest now in child's pose or kneeling up, which, whichever feels more comfortable for you. But take the weight out of the arms. Good. 
good. That's it. If you're lifting that leg up behind, make sure the foot is flexed rather than pointed because that's really activating the muscle in the back of the leg, which is what we want. That's it, Catherine, good. Okay. Make sure you've done even amounts on both sides. Great. And rest, everyone come into a rest. That's it. Particularly important to take the weight out of the arms because even just being on our hands and knees is tiring. So just take a moment, head down. All right, we're gonna do one more and it will be opposition balance with the level two or level three little mini press up moment. So we will take the right arm forwards and the left leg back. We hold for a moment, pull up the stomach muscles and we bring it down, okay? If you are level two, level three, you're gonna add that little press up. If you're level three, Feel free to try and touch the tip of the nose down, okay? Just up your ante a tiny bit. But level one, we're simply going with the lift and the lower. Again, four is a maximum. Just strengthening the back of the body as well as the shoulders and the core muscles. You'll feel your stomach muscles engage as you lift those limbs away from each other. So I'm going to have done my four now. If you're level one with me, we're coming down into another rest. Again, weight out of the arms. Breathing slowly. Good. Well done. Okay. Make sure you're now in some kind of resting pose. <laughs> That's it. It's great. When I see people who are desperate to squeeze in a few more, I know you guys are in a good space. And then slowly bring yourself up to sitting upright. Now I'm going to sit on a yoga block if you've got a cushion or um, yeah, something kind of small and firm that will support you a little bit higher off the floor than sitting flat. That's always a good thing. And I'm gonna sit cross-legged. Now, if your knees don't like being cross-legged, then you can support with cushions to make sure that your legs are happy, okay? There's no point in sitting in a position that the body does not like being in. So pillows, cushions, bolsters, blankets, whatever you've got, stuff it under. Okay. I am going to allow my body to be still for a moment. So we're moving into the yoga part of the practice now. And this is very much about slowing down, connecting with our breath, getting the mind and body to kind of join up together. The whole meaning of the word yoga means to yoke or to bring together the mind and the body. Union. So let's just sit and take a stillness. I want you to close your eyes and without any sense of judgment, just scan in your mind's eye through the body and notice what you find. You might notice some symptoms for you today. It might be a quiet day on that front but I don't want you to have any particular judgment around it, just observe. So for me, I notice that when I breathe, there's a pain on the right-hand side of my chest. 
it is what it is. I notice my heart does slightly odd things. That is what it is. But I just want you to kind of scour through with your own mind. And just observe. And then allow the breath to become your focus. I want you to lengthen the breath just a tiny bit, just to begin with. So we're going to breathe in for the slow count of four. Hold it for maybe two, three, four, whatever feels right. And breathe out for a little bit longer. So maybe six, maybe even eight if you can. So we're just gently stretching that breath cycle. Breathing in for four, holding for four. Remember, you can change these numbers to suit and out for six or eight. If the hold works for you only for a second or two, then have it be a second or two. We're trying to get the breath a little bit lower down into the abdomen. And if at any point it feels too much like hard work, just stop trying to control the breath and sit with a very soft, gentle cycle. Breathing in gently. Breathing out gently. And as you stay with that slowing breath, so the mind gets the cue to calm the systems down. The breath reflects the state of mind, always. And so we can influence the state of mind by slowing down the breath. Okay, gently open the eyes if they've been closed. We'll just do some easing from this position if everyone's okay to stay here. So I've got my right leg in front of my left in a crossover. So if you don't have that, just to make your life easier, come into it the same as me. I work in opposition to you, so this is actually my left in front, but when I lean this way, it's your right, so you'll be following me. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting my right hand to the floor and stretching my left arm up, just lengthening. So I'm creating a bit of space here. Let's breathe in and breathe out as you bring it back. The next thing we're going to do is twist around to the side. So my left hand comes across and touches that right knee. The other arm's going to swing gently around behind. Shrug the shoulders down, inhale. Exhale, turn to look behind you a little bit. Breathe. Deep breath in. And bring it back to center. I'm going to take my left arm up and over the side of my head and draw the left ear down towards the shoulder. I'm going to take my right hand and just let the fingertips touch gently down. So I've got a strong stretch down the right hand side of my neck. Might not feel very nice. Keep the chin up if you can. 
Deep breath in and release, let that go. I'm gonna turn my head to the right, just gently twisting through the neck, turn it to center, turn it the other way, back to center. I'm gonna lift the chin up, stretch up the front of the neck to center. Now we'll take Garudasana arms and add in the chin drop. So I've got my elbows up in front of me. I'm gonna cross the right elbow over the left. If you can get the hands to meet, great. If they don't, don't worry. Just let the backs of the hands be moving towards. And I'm gonna lift the elbows up. Now drop the chin. So it's a strong stretch through that top back into the shoulder area. Use the breath, nice slow breath in. And as you exhale, release, let those shoulders and arms settle back down. Okay, last thing we're gonna do is come forwards into a little bit of a forward bend. Let the head drop, I've got the weight in my hands as I walk them forwards, and just let the head hang down. And slowly push into the hands and ease the body back up. I'm going to straighten my legs out and we'll do the second time. Give them a little release. Those knees sometimes can need a bit of easing out. And then second side, left leg in front. Okay. Left hand. Right arm, ease it up and over. Just gentle side stretch, breathe. Deep breath in and release. Shoulders down. I'm gonna take the hand across. I'm moving into the twist. So this is my right hand. I'm gonna sweep the other arm around behind. Fingertips touch down, inhale. Exhale, turn a little bit more. Look behind you. Breathing into the tummy. And breathing out, bring it back to center. Good. I'm gonna take my right arm and lift it up. And draw that right ear down towards the right shoulder. I've got a stretch in the left hand side of my neck. Let the fingertips just lengthen away. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale, release, bring it back to center. I'm gonna turn my head one way. To center. To the other way. To center. Lift the chin up. To center. And let's bring Garudasana arms. So now I've got my left on top of my right. Lift them up and drop the chin down. Breathe into the back of the body. Deep breath in and release. Let those arms come down. And then fingertips to the floor. Ease the body forwards. Gently, slowly, head comes down. Breathing, gently in, gently out. And slowly bringing the body back up to being upright. Great. So working at this really slow, gentle pace using the breath, it's almost like we're kind of hypnotizing the body with this very easy, soft pattern of movement. We're gonna come down onto our backs. Make sure you've got a blanket nearby. We haven't quite finished doing the poses, but we will go into our relaxation from here. So make sure whatever you're gonna put over you to keep you warm, you have it to hand. I'm coming down onto my mat, onto my back. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is with my legs bent, I'm gonna cross my right thigh over the left thigh. 
And now, if you can, I want you to bring both those legs up towards you and just draw them in a little bit. So you can have your hands on the knees or the shins or for the kind of level three version, the, the ankles, pulling the heels in towards the bottom. You will feel a stronger stretch into the right hip and the right buttock, which is exactly why we're doing the stretch. So just hold here for a moment, head really heavy and relaxed. Deep breath in and breathe out. We're going to switch the legs around. Again, keep all of your movements really slow. So we're constantly maintaining that, that sort of gently hypnotic movement pattern. Nothing jarring. And all of this is encouraging the brain to switch us from sympathetic stress response to parasympathetic healing response. Basically telling the brain we're okay. It's okay to step down from high alert. And let's release on that side. Okay. I'm going to let the soles of the feet be together and the knees drop wide. So again, we're repeating what we did in our little strengthening session, but just as a stretch. Just let those hips open. And I'm taking the arms along the floor. I'm just taking a moment here, straightening them out above the head. I want you to take a slow, full breath in and then bring the arms all the way back and just let them be by your side for a moment. Now, if that felt quite strong, I don't want you to repeat it. But if it felt nice or you kind of really thought, oh, I could do that again, then do that again. Take the arms back above the head, tuck the chin in just a little bit, nice and slow with the movement. Inhale. And exhale, bring the arms back. And now again, let those arms rest by your side. And bring the knees back together. I'm going to straighten both legs down. And I'm gonna bring the right knee in and give it a hug. Just draw it into the chest. Head, neck and shoulders stay relaxed. And now I've got my opposite hand only on that top knee. So this is my right leg I've bent. So I've got my left hand on it. My right arm's going out to the side. So I've just opened that out. And I'm gonna gently pull that knee across the body just enough and turn and look along my back arm, the right arm. So there's no way I'm trying to take that bent knee to the floor, don't even try. I'm just taking it across to get a gentle twist. Deep breath into the tummy. And bring it all the way back to center. I'm going to straighten that leg down and let it rest for a moment. Just let the leg lie there. If your body gives you the cue to take a really full breath in, just enjoy that and sigh the breath out. And we'll do the second side. So I'm going to bring that knee in, the left knee, draw it in, give it a hug. And again, I've got my opposite hand now only on that knee. I'm taking the other arm out wide, my left arm. Let's inhale. Exhale, take that bent knee across, ease it over, and turn and look along your back arm, your left arm. Gently easing into this twist, sending the breath down into the abdomen. See if you can feel the abdomen lift as you breathe in. And then gently bring it back to center. And we're going to straighten that leg down too. Okay. From here, I want you to get yourself a blanket and get yourselves warm. So covering up 
get cozy. If you quite like having something underneath the back of the knees, like a pillow or a bolster, because it's not so comfortable for you lying flat, then do that. So once you've got yourself warm and tucked up, and I know we were talking about eye bags last week in class, um, and don't forget, it doesn't need to be a kind of an official eye bag purchased from a, a store. It can just be something that you put over your eyes. It just has a little bit of weight in it that's soft. Um, but it does help to calm the mind if the mind is very busy. So if you've definitely got any bright overhead lights on, I would turn them off. And if lying completely flat doesn't work for you, a little folded blanket or a small cushion under the head is great, but please don't do double cushions. I don't need to close in around the throat and neck area. Okay. So I think you're all looking pretty cozy and comfy. That's good. We're gonna start just by lengthening the back of the neck, tucking the chin in and then let it release. Let the back of the head just sink down into the mat. And just notice the weight of the head as it gently presses down into the floor. Jaw relaxed, tongue soft in the mouth. Allow the forehead to soften, the jaw to relax, and the tip of the tongue to rest now against the lower teeth. Slow inhale, slow exhale. And now working down through the neck and to the shoulder area. Make sure the shoulder blades have shrugged down. The arms are a little distance away from the sides of the body. Upper arm heavy, lower arm heavy. Palm soft, fingers lightly curled. breath moving slowly in, slowly out through the nose, allows the rib cage to lift and fall. Just observe whether or not your abdomen also follows the same response. Ideally, the abdomen lifts as you breathe in very slightly and descends as you breathe out. Don't be afraid to encourage the abdomen to join in with the breath. The back of the hips are heavy. Back of thigh, front of thigh, heavy and relaxed. Above the knee, below the knee, front and back of the knee, soft, heavy and relaxed. Front of shin, back of calf, relaxed and released. Back of heel, heavy, top of foot, soft, sole of foot, relaxed. Toes, relaxed. The whole of the body surrenders down into a state of deep rest. And now the mind. Just observe the mind. And then I want you to move thoughts to the outside edges of the space, take them a little out of focus. 
And with that breath, create a clear, calm space in the center of your mind that you can keep coming back to. Maybe there's a color attached to it, maybe not. But thoughts are not able to stray into this clear space. We're asking them to wait around the outside edges. And just give us a little time off. And all the time that soft, slow breath moves in and moves out. Easing the mind and body into a state of deep conscious relaxation. And I know many of you benefit from staying in this relaxation state for a little bit longer. So I'm going to sign out and leave you in this rest. If you can stay for another few minutes, it'll be a real gift to yourself. Have a good day. And I'll see you for a Thursday session if you're coming back in then. Take care all.